Zapier is not automation, it's duct tape. It's really smart duct tape, but it's got a bit of a God complex sometimes. Now, most people think that Zapier is a slick automation tool that just works, and I get it, that's the brand. But in this video, I'm gonna take it from a slightly different angle because Zapier doesn't always behave like the tool that it claims to be. Now, here's the thing I want you to remember throughout this video, because automation isn't just about saving time. It's also about saving mental bandwidth. Now, too many companies think that Zapier is just there to eliminate manual tasks, and that's wrong because the real value is in reducing cognitive load. The fewer open loops that your team's got to juggle, well, the more brain power they've got left to do the actual thinking and the actual doing. And Zapier, when used well, really keeps your team from drowning in glue work. When it's used badly, well, it becomes the glue. So can Zapier help you to get more done with a tiny team or just you solo? Well, every founder and manager wants to know how to get twice the output without hiring anybody new. And Zapier really sells the dream of a lean, mean automation machine. You connect your apps, you set it, you forget it, and watch the magic happen while you nap. In reality, you might not get to nap but it can help a small team punch well above their weight. Think new customer signs up, their details go into your CRM, they get a personalized email and a notification pings your Slack, all while your tiny team focuses on other more important work. Another example is if you run an e-commerce business, you can set up a zap that tags a VIP user in your support system, adds a note in your CRM, and triggers a thank you message, all triggered by a single Shopify sale. It's not glamorous, but it makes your customers feel like royalty. And for developer-focused teams, imagine deploying a webhook that alerts your team when somebody opens up a new GitHub issue, logs it into Linear, and sends a Slack message to the relevant engineer. No context switching, no duplicate tracking, just a smooth handoff that makes your devs feel like they're working in the 23rd century. The trick is using Zapier to automate the glue work that actually steals time, but doesn't move the needle. If your team is juggling six roles, well, Zapier can feel like a seventh pair of hands. Slightly clumsy hands, but helpful nonetheless. But this then begs the question, is Zapier reliable enough for mission-critical workflows? Well, the answer is not unless you hate sleep. Because Zapier runs on polling, which is a little bit like the software equivalent of poking something repeatedly until it reacts. It can take minutes for zaps to trigger. And if one fails, sometimes the whole thing just kind of dies quietly in the corner. No red flags, just silence. Now that's fine, for minor tasks, but if you're relying on Zapier to run onboarding flows, sync CRMs, or trigger payment updates, you better have alerts, backups, and a pretty strong stomach. And version control? Well, forget it. You can't see what changed, it just changed, like a teenager's taste in music. Oh, and by the way, if you're finding this video helpful, I'd love it if you could whack that like button and subscribe to the channel. Seriously, it's what keeps small channels like mine alive and kicking. So does Zapier really scale with your company? Well, you'd think it would. It's got premium plans and teams and companies and plans that cost more than my first car. But let's be honest, Zapier starts to feel a little bit like a Rube Goldberg machine once you pass 30 to 40 zaps. Tracking down which zap does what becomes a bit of a digital scavenger hunt. Also, managing access, ownership and permissions, well, it's a little bit like trying to share your Netflix password without starting a civil war. If you want scale, then you want modularity, logging, testing, staging. Zapier pretends it's got these things, but really it's duct tape with a team calendar. So given all of this, is it actually better than the competition? Well, now we're cooking because Zapier is not the only game in town. You've got Make, which is more powerful, but also more confusing than IKEA instructions written in Latin. You've got Pipe Dream, which is great for developers. N8N is open source and fantastic if you like self-hosting and occasional tiers. But Zapier wins on UI, documentation, and third-party integrations. Speaking of which, it's got more integrations than your average crypto bro has got browser tabs open. And if you need to integrate obscure things like Airtable to Pinterest when somebody sneezes in Zapier's office, odds are there's a template there. But if you're a developer, well, you're going to hit limits and you're going to hit them fast. And this is why at StateShift, we coach tech companies not just to adopt tools like Zapier, but to design engagement systems around the right kind of tool chain. You see, most tech companies struggle to drive consistent user and developer engagement, but we ride side by side with you, providing clear frameworks, hands-on coaching, and over 27 years of experience to help you scale adoption, revenue, and brand growth. So if your engagement strategy feels like it was assembled in a bit of a panic, well, we should definitely talk. You can find out more by clicking on the link down there in the video description. So is Zapier worth the price? All right, here we go. Because nothing says automation at scale like hitting a usage cap you didn't know existed. And Zapier charges by the zap, the task, and possibly by the phase of the moon. So the pricing tiers are fine, 
until you blink and you're suddenly in the pro plan paying 100 bucks a month to automate a dozen spreadsheets and a Google Doc. Now, to be clear, it can be worth it. We use Zapier extensively at StateShift, and if those tasks save real labor, you're gonna save a ton of time and money. But be warned, it all adds up pretty quickly. And unless you're meticulous with usage, it can feel like a bit of a silent tax on growth. So overall, is Zapier any good? Well, absolutely. I think it's fantastic if you keep it in its lane. For small teams, solopreneurs, MVPs, and glue code operations, it's magic. And it's magic as long as that you understand that the magic trick has been held together with a bit of dental floss. But don't fool yourself into thinking it's DevOps in a box. It's not. It's a helpful psychic, a capable assistant, not the lead actor. Now, if you like this video, I'd love it if you could give it a like, subscribe for more breakdowns like this, and drop a comment down there if you're using Zapier and what other tools you'd like me to review next on my channel. Now, an area where Zapier is amazing is creating a content machine, creating blog posts, social media, videos, and more. And Zapier can save hours of time weaving these content platforms together. But you still need great content to make it work. And if you go and check out this video next, I walk step by step through how to create great content, pulling from 27 years of experience working with over 200 different companies for how to create amazing content that really converts on the internet. So go check that out. I think you'll find it 10 minutes well spent.